Very good. Thank you, Nanette, and all of our authors. I'd like to invite all the authors uh, to join me back on screen. And also joining us are Farnoosh uh, Kodakarani, who co-authored the paper uh, on brand safety with Ross Johnson. Farnoosh is an assistant professor of marketing at the San Diego State University Fowler College of Business, uh, complementing her coursework on digital marketing and marketing and analytics, her research focus on solving timely real world marketing strategic challenges. So on to a Q and A session. Um, let's start off. Uh, th there are actually two broad themes I think that were discussed through all of the papers. One is uh, brand size and familiarity, and the other really is the uh, impact of media. So um, I'll try to, uh, you know, engage in a discussion that each of the authors can respond to uh, on, a, on a similar dimension. Um, maybe we will start out with Scott, though. A very simple question is familiarity the same as brand size? Um, and maybe more specifically, you know, it would, a, would a, a very familiar but a very small brand have the same effect? And then I have similar questions, actually, for the other authors in their paper. Yeah, the, the focus, again, was whether or not um, uh, subjects in some way, form can go and identify the brand. We we defined the familiar brands as we gave them a product category and said, what brands can you think of in the category? And pretty much the first mention that was the familiar brand. So is it brand size? In this particular study, they were largely the same thing. The most, the most familiar brand was pretty much always the largest market share brand. And then the small brands were ones that were there in the market, but they usually got absolutely last mentioned. So they were extreme measures. It does correlate with brand size. Now, there are some brands, say, for example, you know, they're, they're not actually particularly large brands worldwide. Some examples might be, say, Mercedes or BMW, but they do, you are particularly familiar with these brands despite the small share. So... How does it work with brand size? That's a good question. I, I'm, you know, we we spend a lot of time talking about familiarity. We don't necessarily talk about brand size. Um, there's some wonderful work that I've done decades ago. This was with Dave Stewart, to whereas we didn't focus on familiarity, we focused explicitly on brand size. It did have an effect. Which one's stronger? Not sure yet. I'd I'd love to be able to do studies to be able to compare the two. So I'd. My gut feel, yes, the big brands are the familiar brands. Good. No, this is an interesting example of a sort of counterintuitive. Yeah. Um, we're doing at the ARF, we're doing work uh, actually with, with Meta on uh, privacy. And so for Farnoosh and Ross, um, and I know, Ross, you mentioned uh, the impact of familiarity as possibly future research, but I'm wondering if you. Uh, I wonder if you you have a point of view, uh, or Farnoosh has a point of view in terms of where it's all going to uh, lead. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be really interesting to find out, right? You know, I think part you, I could see it really going either way, right? Because you know, McDonald's is really well known. This is just one brand exposure. I see McDonald's every day on my way to work, right? So maybe it wouldn't affect me as much. And then a brand I'd never heard of, I see a negative. Um, brand safety image with it. Maybe that affects me more, or maybe I just don't even remember it because that was my first instance of seeing that. That's exactly my, my point. If I don't know the brands at all, and if I'm not likely to see it again in another ad, is it really going to have a negative effect? Even even if it's next to unsuitable content in another right. week, in another ad, would it really have an effect? So one thing I wanted uh, to add is that I can tie it back to what Scott <laughs> was talking about brand recall. I think like Maybe it has an impact on brand recall later because you see this um, very uh, explicit image mm. with, alongside the brand. Maybe it helps you to remember the brand. Maybe it increases the brand recall, but not necessarily in a positive way later. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> that, have a actually, positive. Right. If it was next to some really, um, there's there's two levels. One is unsuitable, which is like a, not crazy, shouldn't be there. And then I forget what the other level is, which like is porno and it really shouldn't be anywhere near there but but if it was in a pretty very unsuitable content that, that that's an interesting comment whether or not it would you would remember it but in a negative uh point of view um Shenzhen, do you think that the social influence would it have any difference depending on brand familiarity and brand size if i'm 
if I'm a, a weak tie and you know I see a reference to a brand I've never heard of before, is it likely to work any different? Um, so far, we haven't explored the moderating role of brand fam uh, familiar for familiarity in weak tie. So my answer is based on intuition. Spillover effects through weak tie is a typical word of mouth marketing. Uh, for big brand, the brand per se speak for themselves. Word of mouth might help, but the effect is limited. Um, say, if you are familiar with something, you will not consult others when making purchase related decisions, right? Uh, and for small brand, if consumers are not familiar with it, word of mouth from other people is an important reference. So uh, the answer is, I guess, weak ties as word of mouth marketing will impact small brand more than big brand. Really interesting. And I noticed in your paper, you quoted Mark Ranavetter. Uh, he was actually on my dissertation committee and, and I think probably is the grandfather of, uh, of strength of weak ties and, and really network theory. Um, okay, let's move on to media. Um, Ross and Farnoosh, um, you used 92 second uh, videos. I wonder if you could just clarify, like where in the videos were the ads? How, how what was the placement uh, in the, uh, was it pre-roll? I'm anxious to think if it would fit more into digital advertising or television advertising. Uh, to answer your first question, it was mid-roll. So right mid-roll. Mid yep. Okay. Um, do you think, um, let's talk about media then. Do you think your results would have been similar? And and actually, all of the authors, I'm going to ask this question. Uh, so we had we had video, uh, we had social, and we had online magazine. If you think about the other two media that were discussed here, could you comment uh, on how you think your results would have turned out in those other media? Any anybody can go first. Otherwise, I'll go around the circle. Let's go with Scott first. Um, we focused on online magazine. So if you've got it, one of the things about it is it's something that's self-paced. Um, right. You can spend more time on an ad if you choose to. In those media where you can't necessarily, that is sort of streaming along at a particular pace, um, not sure how this, this would work. But where you can spend extra time with an ad, then I would expect to see some of these effects, how it's going to work in a more structured media, um, say, for example, the, the one in which the first speakers had, to whereas it was mid-roll, it was set up, it was a video that that was not paced by the, the consumer. Anyone's what, guess? What do you think about scrolling media? I think of, I think of everything we talk about, scrolling media is probably the most different, right? Because it's... Yeah. It's very fast. It's moving. It it requires yeah. attention to scroll through. Yeah. Um. Hard to say. These are all good questions, and uh, the best answer would would actually come from the data. Is future research good? Yeah. Sen Senjin or uh, Ross and Farnoosh, do you have any thoughts on the other media that you didn't test? Uh, yeah, I I wanted to mention. I think at least in our research, so obviously we have to do experiments to answer that uh, with certainty. But I believe. With video, I think we get the most effect because you're in the middle of consuming the content, you're focused on mm -hmm. the content, and then you see the ads versus if it was an ad which showed up alongside a website that you're looking at due to this phenomenon of banner blindness, you are maybe do not even focus on that part of the website. Maybe you don't see the ad or pay, don't pay attention to the ad, so it may have less effect, less negative effect if the yeah. negative... Um, uh, content is there versus when you're in the middle of like you're focused on watching this video and then this um, this negative content shows up I believe it has a more uh, detrimental effect on the brands right although although in an online magazine it the opportunity to see is is much greater but whether you're actually looking at it is mm. uh, is I guess much more questionable yeah. um, it's funny so so if I if I took a contrary position and said okay so maybe creative is not all it's cracked up to be, especially for familiar brands and, you know, advertisers have lost control in, in a programmatic environment. Uh, and, um, and, and social, the, the social experiment, 
uh, Sanjan was huge in numbers. How, with with all these complications, what would be your overall recommendation for how um, both a large and a small advertiser might build a brand? Let's start with Scott first again. Well, again, the, the smaller brands have to be creative. They don't have a choice in the matter. They're going to get ignored. Um, people aren't going to pay attention. Um, they don't have any choice. So that's it. Larger brands, well, there might be a bit of a negative effect. But again, after you've seen the ad a couple times, does it turn out to be the positive? So there's going to be repetition effects. Um, there's going to be interference effects. Um, again, that's that's our next study. Okay? <laughs> so <laughs> if you've got multiple ads within the category that are showing up, does all of a sudden some of the results change? So we'll have to see. Good. How about Ross and Farnoosh? What, what would your recommendations be for building brands? Obviously, with respect to your experiment and brand safety and Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Scott answered it really well, right? I mean, I think that these... You okay, buddy? Oh, Shen Zheng, you go. Go for it. Sorry. Uh, I, I just realized that I, I muted myself. Oh. You can go. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if, if there are no thoughts that come out of your experiment, I'm, I'm thinking specifically... Um, you know, your opening statement, um, Austin Pernus, was about programmatic and having lost control and what the impact is. Um, I would you recommend staying away from programmatic? That that's a that's a tough thing to necessarily recommend. I mean, I think kind of getting to your your question, right? The these bigger brands do have more resources that they could dedicate to making sure that their placements are safe, right? Whether that's a, something as simple as you said, you, you your team was working with Meta, right? And they have rolled out a new platform on Facebook that you can actually just pay more to have a, a safer placement, right? But you can also just dedicate resources internally or externally to monitor those placements as well. And a smaller brand, you know, they don't necessarily have those resources necessarily. So um, I wouldn't, it is really, I mean, there are obviously a lot of benefits to programmatic advertising as well, right. but you do get a lot of impressions out there for a lower cost than uh, some traditional media. So it'd be tough for me to completely say disregard it, um, but I think you do certainly need to be uh, cautious. Yeah. Sen Jen, and my it, sense, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. go right ahead. I just wanted to say my sense is that, again, it's very hard to get the scale that you can get with programmatic if you want to do it on your own and most smaller businesses don't really have those resources to to really create that uh, scaling up or getting impression from different websites so going with programmatic is i think by default is but you can also be more selective about which platforms you want to advertise on so if for example x or facebook or instagram choosing what platform is more appropriate for your brand if you think is more safe for your brand or you can also have the option to block some specific website if you're not uh if you don't feel those are safe environments and also i think the advertising agencies also have a bigger role in like controlling because most advertisers don't even have access to those they just set up like keywords or specific topics that they want to target they don't really have control over uh, where their ads showed up versus the advertising agencies. So those platforms uh, should play a bigger role in ensuring that the ads show up along the safe content. Got it. And you mentioned scale. Senjen, let, this is the last question. Your numbers were huge. Do you, do you think mm -hmm. that the strength of weak ties would work as well if you were dealing with, a, say, a much smaller social network that couldn't generate numbers like that? Um, actually, results of our study indicate significant spillover effect, but in very small effect size uh, for other medias with smaller number of audiences. Even the spillover effect exists for them. We may not detect such effect based on the limited sample That's size. True. So, so the effect exists, but you may not be able to pick it up in an experiment because you yes. simply wouldn't have the Due to the, due to the effect size. Good answer. Well, thank you all. We're at time. 
Um, thanks so much for uh, some great presentations and some really good conversation. Uh, in the meantime, we hope you and our, uh, our audience attends our Attribution and Analytics Accelerator uh, Conference in 2023. That's on November 14th. Uh, go to the ARF.org to register. Uh, and as previously mentioned, there'll be a quick two question survey that comes along. We'd really appreciate it if you'd be able to fill it out to help us uh, really curate these programs in the future. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of the, your, your afternoon.